What is up, everybody? It's your girl, Mercy. Today, I'm going to be going over failed swings and imbalance. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right. So a failed swing line, what is that? It's very similar to a trend line, right? When I see prices failing to swing higher, it pretty much indicates to me that I should be looking for sales because price is failing to make higher highs. It's actually making lower lows and probably lower highs, right? So as you can see, starting here, okay, this is the high. Then you come here. This failed to close higher than this high. We come here. This failed to close higher than this high. This one failed to close higher than this high and then so forth. It continues on. Initially, they all keep failing to swing higher than this one, right? Same thing with price failing to swing lower. Here's the low. We have price failing to swing lower than that low. Price failing to swing lower than that one. Then lower than that one. Lower than that one and so forth. Indicating price wants to keep rising. All right, so I use these as a confluence when I'm entering into the market. So as you can see here, price is failing to swing lower. So here we have this low here. As you can see, price is just failing to close below this low, right? And then this one failed to close below here. Now this one is failing to close below here. Because price is failing to swing lower, that indicates to me that I should be looking for buys. Not only that, I have this strong impulsive move to the downside of the market. When I see strong impulsive moves like this, that means they have little to no buyers in involved, indicating there's imbalance in the market, all right? So when I see stuff like this, I would typically go for the last order block right below price. In this case, we're looking for a bullish order block for buy entries. Bullish order blocks are buy for buy entries. Bearish order blocks are for sell entries. Okay, so I'm looking for price to push back down here and to bounce off for a buy. All right, so I'm gonna measure 50 points because my stop loss is always no more than 50 points from my target. All right, and I also want to measure 20 points, 20 to 30 points, this one's 29 because my TP1 is always 20 to 30 points from my entry. I do this because I, I at least have at least two to three entries. I wanna set one of my entries to automatically take me out at TP1 just to secure some profits. Okay, I've been doing it this way for about like two years now. And for me personally, it's the best way I can I go about making sure, making sure I don't leave any money on the table. Okay, so I'm just gonna target some key areas that I see the market has liked in the past for take profits. All right, so I'm looking for a long position here. My stop loss would be here. My target would be here. All right, let's fast forward. Look at that. Okay, as soon as price started to reject off of it, I would get my entry. So let's say I have three entries here. All right, so my first entry is set to TP1. My second entry, let's say I set it to TP2. And then let's say I set my last entry all the way here, okay? Oops, let's see. All the way up here. Now, mind you, they all have the same stop loss area, all right? So I'm just giving you guys a representation of how I go about trades and what I'm thinking when I'm in these trades. All right, cool. So these are my three entries. As you can see, I entered, entered, entered. I manually enter. And then I go ahead and adjust my take profit points. All right, so let's keep it going. All right, boom, TP1 was hit. TP1 is 29 points, right? So depending on your lot size or your contract size, if you're trading Forex or futures, you just caught 29 points, okay? 29 points is secure but we still have some profits running. All right, so let's keep going. All right, TP2 was just hit. So let's see what TP2 was. TP2 is about 60 points. So now my next entry is out with 60 points. All right, I don't wanna leave this running on the table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my stop loss. You can either move it to break even or at this point TP1. I'm just gonna move it to break even, right? 
I've already made profits for the day, which is really good. Now I don't want to risk those. I'm moving my stop loss to break even. All right. Once these next take profits are hit, I'm actually going to move my take profit or my stop loss up to TP2. And I'm going to take partial profits if I can. Now, if you're trading futures and let's say you had two contracts still on this trade, I'm going to take one contract out. If you're trading Forex and you have like a 0 0.10 on this trade, maybe I'll take 0 .0, 0 0.05 of it. Okay, so I'm taking partials and I'm moving my stop loss to TP2 because one, two, three, four has been hit, okay? And look at that, all take profits were hit. Now, do you notice how I made sure I secured along the way because this is not always guaranteed. Sometimes it is going to um, hit TP one and two and then push back down to break even, but at least you made something, right? Um, and you took what the market gave you gave you. Now notice how price kept failing to swing lower and it filled the imbalance that we were targeting. Okay, so that's really what I want to get a point at. As you want to watch for when price is failing to swing lower or higher. So if I remove the drawings here real quick, you can see this even before it started pushing up, it actually failed to swing lower or failed to swing higher right here. And then began pushing down off of this order block here, right? So you wanna pay attention to areas in the market where price is actually failing to swing um, lower or higher, indicating buys or sells. Now, when we go on the higher time frame, you can see that as well. You can see from here to here, price continuously was failing to swing lower, indicating that I, I should be selling it, okay? And this is the fail to swing higher move that we caught there. Um, and then let's talk about imbalance, all right? Like this is a strong impulsive move to the downside of the market with little to no buyers involved. Now, how I know imbalance has been filled, I drag it out and look at that. It was slowly but surely filled, okay? Now, sometimes imbalance will be created by, by creating more imbalance. And you wanna keep in mind that imbalance isn't always gonna fill right away, okay? Here's another example. There's little to no sellers involved in this bullish imbalance. And as you can see, it was slowly but surely filled. All right. So this one as well. This is strong, impulsive move to the upside of the market. It was actually filled. And part of that fill was creating more imbalance, which was filled. So I just use these gaps in the market as a confluence of why I want to enter into the trade. Like this one right here is a pretty good one. As you can see, price is failing to swing, right? We have buy stop liquidity here, right? We even actually have sell stops here as well. But because price is failing to swing um, lower, that really indicates to me like, okay, price wants to keep pushing up. And then look at that as we already knew that was gonna happen because we are replaying it. But as you can see, it kept failing to swing high, I mean, lower. It took the liquidity that was above and now it created some imbalance below, right? And then you'd start targeting and seeing like, okay, it's struggling to break this area. Is price trying to take the sell stops below? Well, it broke my failed swing line. This is a good example because when it breaks the failed swing line, that may indicate like, okay, it actually wants to keep pushing pushing up, right? So I would delete that because that's invalid, right? Now looking at the past, I see, okay, price is actually rejecting off of an order block right here. So price actually, since this order block is starting to fail to swing, it pushed back into this area once more. Let me change the color. Probably get a sell entry here because it's failing to swing. And we have imbalance below right here, consolidating, and there it finally goes, right? So it filled half of the imbalance, and then it started pushing up. All right. So let's keep it going. I want to see what price is going to do. Because it stopped failing to swing. Still rejecting off that area. And let's see, it finally filled the imbalance. So just to be sure, because we didn't really actually do this trade, I want to see 
if I were to enter here, would I still be in? Probably would have barely stopped me out on this one here, but it all time and price goes into play. Like pretty much with this one, I wouldn't have entered here where I actually, um, this right here, where I said, okay, enter, because it wasn't my trade time. I only trade usually market opening. So realistically, I would have waited till around here. Right, let's go to the, yep, this would have been my entry around here. So price would have been failing to swing all night. And then 9.30 hit would have gotten that entry to keep pushing with price down as it fills the imbalance. All right. And then I know I have a four hour order block coming up. So I'd want to be mindful of that. All right. And then it started to push back up. As you can see, now price is failing to swing lower, bouncing off a breaker block here for buys. And it's trying to fill the imbalance that it created um, when it pushed down. All right. I wouldn't enter up here because this is later in the day. It's all about time and price. You notice it's consolidating around the same exact times every single day. So you want to be mindful of that, right? This would probably be ideal right here. And yep, that is the morning time. And look at that. It filled that imbalance that it created. All right. And then I'd look to see if price is going to continue to fail to swing here. Um, Let's see what happens. And it didn't. It literally broke it, letting me know that price wants to keep pushing down. Finally pushed off the four-hour order block that I was looking for. It is failing to swing um, lower. Look at that. And it doesn't matter if it wicks below. It's all about the close. It failed to close lower. All right. And then it just kept pushing. And then if I draw this out, look at that. It continued to fail to swing lower. Okay, so this is just a confluence I use um, within my setup. Obviously, there's more things that go into it. I just wanted to give you guys a little run of how I use failed swings and imbalance. All right. For more information, definitely check out the links listed below.